Hello and welcome to another DMI Team Talk. My name is Sean Kenny, Membership Manager here at DMI. And today we're going to take a very brief look at Google Analytics 4. This is the latest version of Google Analytics. And we're going to discuss what makes it a little bit different than the current and basically retiring GA3, also known as Universal Analytics. So we'll look a little bit at what the updates are but we'll also show you how to set up your new GA4 account. Or if you don't currently have a Google Analytics account, we'll show you how to uh, set one up for the first time. And even better, if you don't have a business, which you can link Google Analytics 4 to, or the previous version, we'll show you how to set up a demo account. So it's a very brief walkthrough today, so you can all hit the ground running later this year, because actually, it's quite important anyone in digital marketing who might be responsible for looking at website data gets on this quite soon. So some things to give us a bit of an introduction here and give us some context. Google Analytics 4, this is the, the latest version. It's actually been around for almost two years now. It's coming up on two years. It was released in 2020. It's had different iterations since 2020. It's changed. The interface has changed. The functionality of it has changed as Google have been playing around with what is the best version to present to everyone. And there has been a bit of a slow uptake from people adopting GA4, or should I say moving from GA3, Universal Analytics, to that newest version. But we're getting there now, and one of the reasons we're getting there so quickly is because Google have announced that GA3 will be fully retired next year. That, to be specific, July next year. So there's now a bit of a rush, a bit of urgency uh, for people realizing they're roughly one year away from losing access to the older version. So now we want to turn to just really understand what are the differences going to be? Well, one, it's a different interface, uh, as I've mentioned. So there's different functionality in there. It looks very different, and this actually delayed some of the, the uptake of the new platform. But really, we're going to rattle through some kind of key changes now in the next slides. One to start with is that GA4 has moved away from putting a lot of reports in front of you, detailed reports and reporting tabs, and it's moved towards what are known as summary cards. Okay, So it's summarizing key data for you at a glance. And if you want to dig deeper into it, you can simply click into it and then play around with the relevant data. And it's notifying you of key changes and trends. Okay, We might come to this in a little bit more detail in just a moment. But one of the things and one of the ways it's doing this is by using machine learning. It's really got machine learning at the center, at the core of how Google Analytics 4 works. And it's using that machine learning to put those trends in front of you, to put those insights, to make those summary cards that I refer to, and try to give you a more intuitive understanding of what is going on with your website traffic and it's also trying to as it says here on the slide fill in missing data gaps so there's always gaps in data in the older version ga3 which we'll look at in a moment we were mainly concerning ourselves with page sessions bounce rates and things of that nature and they didn't paint the full picture so now machine learning is stepping in to really give us insights into what users are doing uh, on their journey through our websites, whether that be an e-commerce store or your regular kind of you know website that you've set up for a local business or an enterprise business. So really, it that machine learning is able to pick up on quite a lot of you know the meaning behind the activity on your website. Another thing that they've done is they've simplified reporting completely, and one of the knock-on effects of that is it's now easier to spot the actual key trends or even the irregularities in the data uh, where things don't add up. And it's unifying also GA4 websites and mobile uh, apps. So previously uh, with GA3, you would really have to put a, quite a lot of work into syncing Google Analytics up to your mobile app. If your company had an app at the center of their business, you would be monitoring the two things separately. You couldn't have a dashboard bringing all that data together. You would have to monitor, uh, monitor it separately and make sense of the differences between your app and your, your website. But now with GA4, we can measure all user interact, uh, uh, interactions and journeys across 
devices, websites, and apps. And what's important to say is, it is great that it's bringing together the apps with the website, but also even with devices now, it's a lot more easy to understand one customer journey. It may start on a mobile app, the next stage of that journey may move to a desktop, for example, and may finish on an, uh, an iPad. Uh, but now, uh, using the smart machine learning, it's bringing all of those journeys together and it's able to map them much more clearly. But let's be specific about what are the main differences or updates from GA3 to GA4. Well, we've mentioned it already, but the actual reporting interface is one of the big differences. You have much fewer reports uh, than Google uh, than the previous version, Universal Analytics. And the reports are generated once you start tracking events. So the reports are actually generated by Google Analytics 4. You don't have to select them. You don't have to choose them. It's putting them in front of you automatically. It's bringing data together using machine learning to put meaningful things in front of you in the form of dashboards or tabs. The actual measurement model is different too. And this is a knock on, it, it knocks on to many other differences that you'll find uh, as a user. So one thing with Universal Analytics was that um, it measured all the data based on sessions and page views, okay? Whereas Google Analytics 4 now uses a measurement model based on events and parameters. And that word events crops up quite a lot with Google Analytics 4. Uh, you'll see that you don't have a separate name for page views over specific actions uh, taken in the data. It's all event based measurement um, sessions themselves so sessions used to be a key metric in google uh, analytics 3 or universal analytics and a session was or still is technically a combination of page views events transactions or other actions taken by the user within a given time frame but the big difference now is in Google Analytics 4, sessions are not counted or limited by time. Your session count will likely be lower as a result of this. You're going to see a lot less, uh, less sessions, but you'll see much longer session duration. Uh, as it says here, it will probably increase dramatically. So the average pages per session is no longer measured in Google Analytics 4 either. They're now looking at one session, um, bringing in maybe technically multiple sessions into that as a, an overall journey and giving you more detail about what's going on there for the user. And really crucial, what is their engagement? Are they just clicking around pages or is there something meaningful going on? Bounce rate, which is something you might be familiar with if you were using the older version, uh, and it's now replaced by what is known as engagement rate. And it goes to my last point. So Google Analytics 4 doesn't measure bounce rate anymore at all. It now tracks engagement rate. And engagement rate is very simply the percentage of people who came onto your website that did something meaningful. So if you had 1,000 visitors, for example, but only 100 spent over 10 seconds on a specific page or clicked on a certain um, a certain tab to trigger an event, they will then be what are known as engaged users. And if you only have 100 people out of 1,000 doing that, you have an engagement rate of 10%. So that is 10% of the, the traffic on your website doing something meaningful. It's a much more meaningful uh, data point in and of itself. Bounce rate didn't really tell us quite a lot. So, and it, actually bounce rate missed quite a lot. So if people did do something meaningful, it would still count them as bouncing off uh, one web page, um, you know, if they, if they didn't engage with any others. Another big update is IP uh, anonymization or anonymization, I should say. So because of a lot of GDP or changes now in policies and upcoming policies with tracking using cookies, you will find that your IP address being available to the to the tracking of the older system is an issue. It had to change anyway. So Google 4 is responding to this. In, in Universal Analytics, users needed to configure um, Google Analytics to uh, anonymize their IP addresses. It was all very manual, but this is now automatic in Google Analytics 4. IP addresses are not uh, taken, they're, they're not recorded, they're automatically anonymized. And then, as I referred to previously, app and site monitoring is one of the big changes too. So you no longer have to measure your apps separately from your website. 
with the newest version, you can accurately track across platforms, devices, and so on. So you can actually build out a much more clear view of the customer journey, and you don't have to set up all different processes, which was quite complicated with the older version. Now, I put this very simple image up here to just make one point, and it's the point I made about events. You'll see events everywhere in Google Analytics 4. Google Analytics 3 used to tell us about the amount of page views that a user had, and then separately used to tell us how many custom events they had, or in other words, meaningful actions that you set up manually, whether they clicked a certain link, watched a certain video. And then it would separately, you would have to set up events for say, add to cart or things of this nature on your website. In Google Analytics 4, everything is now automatically an event. And it's using that to really understand true engagement. If someone's doing anything and how much of that anything are they doing? So now we pose the question, why move to Google Analytics 4 now? Well, I mentioned it off the top, but one key reason is you've got just over a year to do it before the older version ceases to exist. One key thing, one crucial thing though, is that historical reports and data will be deleted from Universal Analytics in 2024. That's just right around the corner. And if you're someone that's really embedded in tracking data for your company or needing to understand what users are doing so you can make models or compare year on year, you're very quickly running out of time, uh, the time that you have access to that data. You're gonna, you're gonna lose it all. So you should be trying to future proof also your tracking because as I mentioned, we're moving towards a cookie free world. Um, one of the key things that happened in the last 12 months was uh, Apple's iOS 14.5 update where users can opt out of cookie tracking. This has caused a massive issue for people looking to um, record specific data points for iOS users. So when we say future proof of your tracking, what you're essentially doing is um, you're using, you're moving to a system in GA4 or a platform that doesn't rely on it. So therefore this interruption is not going to be an issue. Universal Analytics tracks visits and repeat visits by using cookies. It was kind of at the center of what it did. So it was a much needed change. But for you, the digital marketer, you need to make this change if you're going to be able to record meaningful data going forward. It's also just easier for omni-channel and cross-device tracking. And let's face it, most customer journeys now are not just on one device, and they may indeed be across uh, not just different devices, but different platforms. We mentioned the difference between apps and websites, but Google Analytics 4, bringing in that machine learning, is actually gonna fill in gaps and create more fuller pictures of customer journeys for us. And it is about time that we have that kind of information at our fingertips. And Google Analytics 4 will only collect new data, okay, from the time you set up the account. So setting up the account early is key. If you set it up today, you'll be able to look back at all the historical data from, you know, today and the following days and weeks and months when you look back next year. Whereas if you delay this and wait until the very last moment, you're missing basically an entire year of data. Now, with that said, how do we switch to Google Analytics 4? Well, it depends what kind of situation you're in. So we're trying to address all the different types of people here. We'll have some people watching who have never used Google Analytics, the new or old version. We've gone, we're gonna have some people who have only set up and are using the older version. And we've some people that don't even have access to set it up and we'll address that too. So if you don't have Universal Analytics on your site or your mobile app currently, you can simply visit analytics.google.com and set up your first account. And that would be to link it to your business and have that kind of uh, older version there ready uh, to go. And then also set up the new version afterwards. And we're gonna look at how to set up the new version afterwards for those of you that have GA3. But that would be one step, that'd be one way you could do it. For those of you who are using Universal Analytics, you can very simply set up Google 4 um uh, or google analytics for um, and what you very simply do is go into your universal analytics account click on admin you will see this image here before you. you see a screen that that's the same as this image and all you need to do is click on setup assistant in fact i had a quick run through this morning and it took me about 20 seconds to set up a google analytics 4 account so very very easy for those of you already tracking with the old system Setting up different data streams is one key thing you need to realize though 
if you're setting up a new Google Analytics 4 account. For those of you that do have a mobile app and a website, and both are crucial to measure, just be mindful you will need to set up different data streams. It's very easy to do. Google will actually prompt you when you're setting up your account whether you want whether you're setting up a GA4 account for an app or a website. Just be mindful that while the actual new dashboard will bring all the data together for you, you do need to set up two separate accounts. You will have two measurement IDs and a tracking code for each. And just in general, if you're setting up Google Analytics for the first time, whether that be setting up Google Analytics 4 for the first time or Google Analytics 3, you do need to link it to your website or your mobile app. So what you crucially need is a tracking code. Now it's very simple. When you follow that link I had, not on my previous slide, but the one before that, and you go to set up an account, you will be given a tracking code or a measurement ID, or both, I should say. And what you need to do then, well, one of two things, depending on how your website or app is set up, you need to, you neither need to manually install the tracking code into the HTML of your website, or for those of you that are lucky enough to have Google Tag Manager in place, which is very easy to do, you simply just need to pop that tracking code into Google Tag Manager and Google will do the rest for you essentially. And this brings us to our last group of people, and it may be the vast majority of you, people who do not have currently access to a Google Analytics account. And there's a very easy workaround here. If you want experience, if you want to look at the new or the old version, Google are actually giving you a very nice way to play around with the dashboard, completely free and without you know, destroying your own website or anything like that. Now I have a link here uh, where it says click here and I'll drop it into the comments after uh, this talk has concluded. Um, but if you very simply actually even Google, Google demo account, it will bring you to a page you see similar to this and you will have um, a link there that says access demo account. And what they actually give you is access to their own Google merchandise store. So Google sell merchandise and it's a very high volume um, traffic site and there's a lot going on. Um, but they actually give you two free demo accounts, one of the older version GA3 and one of the newer version GA4. And you have a view that is no different to setting it up for your own business. And you're able to play around with it, create reports, understand where all the features are and really get to know the platform. So I encourage anyone who's a digital marketer who doesn't currently have access to set up one of those demo accounts. Now that brings us to our conclusion today. I'm really um, thankful that you've joined us. Uh, if you want more information on this topic specifically or anything digital marketing related, I would point you towards our membership library. Now, there are two ways to become a member at DMI. One is you can actually sign up for a free trial membership. And to do that, just simply visit our website. You'll find it right under your notes. You can si sign up for um, basically free membership on an ongoing basis where you get 10 pieces of content each month. And within that content, you'll find lots of Google Analytics for updates and information, much more deeper dive into the subject. Uh, but also you can become a power member that is a paid up premium member of the Digital Marketing Institute, where you have access to a full suite library that's updated on a daily basis and has everything you need to know essentially about digital marketing. And of course, we do courses as well for any of you needing or looking to do that. But thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you all soon at another DMI Team Talk. Take care.